Welcome to another episode of the Building Bridges Gateway program coming to you from A9 TV, uh, beautiful city Istanbul. Our goal is to bring peace, love and brotherhood to all mankind, regardless of faith, race or nationality. Today we are together with my friend uh, Serkan and Erdem and we have very distinguished guest and I let my friend Serkan to introduce him now. Uh, the name of our guest today is Dr. Hasan Abbas. Mr. Abbas, welcome to our show. We are very honored to see you in our show, really. Thank you. Dr. Abbas is a senior advisor and Bernard uh, Schwartz, fellow at Asia Society and professor of International Secu Security Studies at National Defense University's College of International Security Affairs. He is currently also a non-resident fellow at the Institute of Social Policy and Understanding. He remained a senior advisor at the Balfour Center for Science and International Affairs at the Kennedy School of Government, Harvard University, between 2009 to 11. After having been a research fellow of, at the center from 2005 to 9, he was a distinguished Kadal Kadai Azam chair professor at Columbia University before joining CISA, and has previously held fellowship at Harvard Law School and Asia Society in New York. Hassan received his PhD from Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy, Tufts University, and LLM in International Law from Nottingham University, UK, where he has a Britannia. Shevening uh, Scholar in 1999. Hassan also remained a visiting fellow at the Islamic Legal Studies program at Harvard School between 2009 to 3, 2002 to 3, and as a visiting scholar at the Harvard Law School's program on negotiation 3 to 4, 2003 to 4. His research interests uh, are nuclear prolifer proliferation, religious extremism in South uh, and Central Asia and relations between Muslims and the West. Hassan is a former Pakistani government official who served in, in the administration of Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto 1995 to 96 and the President Parvar Musharraf 1999 to 2000. Mr. Hassan, uh, welcome again. Mashallah, you have such a you know distinguished resume, <laughs> and you look really young. I really wonder how, in such a short years how you be able to do so many, you know, uh, studies and academic uh, uh, achievements. Really, achievements. Uh, I really, uh, you know, do you, if tell me now, let me know if you need to add anything else to to your resume. No, I think thank you very much. It's so kind of you to give all those details, and it is by the grace of God that I was able to make my humble contributions. Mashallah. Mashallah. Thank you. Mashallah. Thanks a lot. Uh, we have like five questions and, uh, you know, we really need to know uh, what you're really thinking about these uh, questions. Uh, the first one is about the Pakistan, as you are a Pakistani citizen. You know, Pakistan has been on the headlines most recently with really thousands of led by the Tahir ul Qadri asking a uh, dissolution of the parl parliament. Also, the Prime Minister Parvaz Esher has his own troubles, what, uh, what with having to face the allegations of bribery and failed to force to meet expectations from him. Can you give us uh, an insider look as to what uh, really is going on there? Certainly. Um, first, I'll actually, I'm required to briefly also say that um, all, all my responses and my views are my personal views and are not reflective of any opinion uh, from any of the organizations that I represent, whether NDU or Asia Society. Okay, um, I the question that you've asked, I think, is a very important one, and this is directly linked to the election season which is upon us in Pakistan. Um, and that is also in some ways linked to the transition that Pakistan went through. Um, I'll very briefly mention that uh, when General Az um, Pervez Musharraf, a military dictator, uh, was kind of shown the door in 2008. And since then, uh, in the last five years, democracy returned to Pakistan. And as you know, and as uh, many other countries, especially Turkey, Indonesia, and some other countries went through such transitions, uh, and those were successful experiences, mm -hmm. Pakistan's experience so far has been a mixed one. Although I think return of democracy is one of the real great things that happened. Um, but with the return of democracy, what happened was that so many of the democratic institutions uh, were kind of undermined uh, and weakened during the times of a military dictatorship. Um, irrespective of whether that dictator was a benign one or his views were religious or political or liberal, keeping that aside, the very institution of dictatorship destroys a society. And that is what has happened. Now that Pakistan is struggling to get back on its feet um, and uh, the, the democratic government completed its five years, 
at, the, at this juncture, many of the religious and political forces are trying to stage a comeback on the street. Um, and in this scenario, uh, Mr. Tahirul Qadri, who is an important religious scholar of Pakistan, um, he has a huge infrastructure of religious institutions, uh, which are somewhat, uh, I would argue, better than many of the very old and very conservative religious seminaries or madrasas. He, he built a modern system of madrasa, and he's very well known uh, for a very important fatwa, or religious ruling that he gave against suicide bombing, which I think, which is actually on the website, yeah. I, which, is, which was a very positive thing. Yes. In area, when he co came back, he represented public opinion uh, by coming on the street and s demanding from the government that there should be electoral reforms. Um, and many people came supporting him because they were kind of disappointed in the um, in, in democracy because in democracy when people vote they expect the change to come very quickly yes. uh, and that had happened so this is the the largest scenario in which Kadri came back uh, demanded uh, made his um, opinion clear uh, which was a democratic way uh, but some people are skeptical uh, whether the military from behind the scenes or some other international elements some people argue uh, partly, this is conspiratorial thinking. People thought maybe U.S. has sent it, maybe U.K. or some international organizations uh, or other countries have pushed him in the country. Some think it is military which is supporting him. I personally think this is all related to the domestic Pakistani political scenario where some religious forces and comparatively progressive political forces are all vying to get the space uh, so that they can, political space, so that they can become... Um, uh, the most important influence on quality <laughs> and politics, direct direction, or they can direct the uh, orientation of democracy. That that it is all about. Yeah, as you have already mentioned, that Turkey also went through this stage as well. You know, and, you know, it does. It takes time to settle down the regulations of the democracy as well. But as far as I am concerned, I think you know this. This uh, Tahir Al Qadri, uh, you know, demonstration. It didn't end with like unwanted you know, uh, uh, unwanted, you know, end, endings, like death of any people, it was a understandable contract at the end signed by two parties, yeah? Is that true? That is true, um, although that lacked any important significance, or it lacked any, um, I would say, important status in terms of agreements. The reason was um, that it, the agreement was signed at the final moment so as to avoid a conflict, I so see. that all the people who were on the streets for five, seven days in uh, real cold weather uh, with small uh, kids and children uh, and, and women that they could go back. Um, it, it was kind of a compromise. It was partly a face-saving exercise as well. But you're right. I mean, the, the real good thing is um, that there was no violence and there was no um, terrorist attack, which was expected. In fact, the government of Pakistan had said that they are certain, they have intelligence reports that most certainly there will be a terrorist attack. And thank God nothing of that sort um, happened. Um, so it, it, by and large, I think of the whole exercise a, in a positive light, uh, because that is what democracy is all about. Yes, exactly. Uh, right. People come out, explain their position, get in, into a dialogue, and, and different lobbies and progressive elements try uh, to, to influence policy in an open way. The problem is when people behind the scenes, um, in secret ways, uh, in small pa in palaces um, or, or in, in, in conspiratorial ways try to influence policy. That is more problematic. I, I